It's a lovely sunny day. Therefore, we spend it all in a unit. Welcome back to Tools and Track. Right guys, it's another mechanical debt episode. So obviously we're going to do some interesting stuff. But before we do, I'm going to answer a lot of people's questions. Those questions that normally revolve around, I've got a great idea for what you could film for your channel. It'll be blah, 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 diesel, very uninteresting nonsense. So today, we're going to do a timing belt on this. And if this isn't my most popular video, it's going to shut you all up. been made by the Volkswagen Audi group, which means it's a substantial platform share. The B6 means that it's an Audi A4 and a Seat Exio in this instance. Now, they all share the same basic layout, the same architecture and the same engines. This one's a 2 litre TDI and the first thing you'll note, it's front to back as opposed to a transverse engine. But that does not mean it's rear wheel drive, it's got a transaxle driving the front wheels and it's also horrendously close to the front slam panel, which makes doing a timing belt on it pig. So, Audi, in their infinite wisdom, have acknowledged that this is a problem and have made the front end quite removable. However, there's still a lot of gubbins because this is quite a new car, which you need to consider. So, first things first, let's get the bumper off. Oh, and by the way, I wasn't joking. If nobody wants to watch this anymore, I won't do any more of these. So, if you do like it, get it liked, get it shared, do all the subscribe crap. That's how YouTube works. This isn't a hard job, it's just 30 degrees C, that is why the sweat is pouring off me right now. Um, but that is us fully stripped down. Now as you can see, I say it, much like all the other B6 variants, it's quite a complicated thing to have to do. The whole front end is in fact off. So as you can see here, I've done my usual. I've mapped up two in the cam, one on the crank down here, but I've also put a mark here. And obviously I've taken the crank fully off and that's moved it out a wee bit, but I'll realign it. This is your fuel pump. That is timed. You must not forget that has to match this and this. Otherwise, your car is going to run like a bag of bollocks. So we're going to take the belt off. This is the tensioner. We'll crack that off and we'll replace that, obviously. We're also going to replace our water pump, which is this wee guy here. Now, when I stripped this down, I did have the fear there that all of this bracketry was going to have to come off. But this is the water pump. Quite possibly the most compact unit I think I've ever seen in my puff but it just slots in as a cartridge and the engine deals with all the rest of the channel work. So that's pretty good. I'll give Audi that. Remember, we did mark up our old belt, and the reason I put one pulley with two marks for the same pulley is just so I've got a reference. So when I put this back on, I'm not guessing which mark is for which pulley. I'll know that that ties in exactly with the cam one, and the rest fall off from there. So what I'm going to do to begin with is mark up the cam one. So we're on a groove, a space, and a groove. Groove, a space, and a groove. And count teeth to the next mark. I always do this tooth by tooth. Don't be tempted to just stretch the belt out. Be aware that this belt will not form to the way the old one is because it's not stretched out and it's not run yet. So always make sure that when you're counting the teeth out, you count it tooth by tooth. Then you double check it. 
and make sure it's categorically the right because you can put this back on the engine and move a pulley out quite easily, knock the whole timing out. So this is your key, this has to be done right. So that's our new belt marked up. We've got two dots there for the cam. We've got the one dot there for the fuel pump and we've got a final dot way down here for the crank. Now, before we put this on, let me set it up here out of the way and then it's ready. And we're gonna move on to the water pump. So like I said, I'm hoping that this water pump's gonna be a nice, easy task. Now, for the first time in this entire job, it's not held in with Torx bits, but with Allen bits. Why? because Audi. The, tran the longitude engine, FYI, is definitely an Audi thing. Audi were the first pioneers to put a transaxle and a, an engine facing forward in. Obviously through various mergers with Volkswagen and Seat and everyone else, they thought, well, this is actually the way to do it for all of our high-end cars. And as a result, it's kind of carried over into everything else. Well, up until the B6, I think the B7 actually is when they went and gave up. And why am I doing this? It's got a socket in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think once the B7 or B8 came along, that's when we gave up and they started putting transverse in again. I know I slate on this quite a bit. It's different and I think it's good to be different. And by all accounts, it makes it very easy to have a four-wheel drive version when there's already a nice, easily compatible transaxle at the front, which can then be adapted to send power to the back. There's a whole reason I've been working behind a slam panel is because I don't want to interrupt the cooling system. Mm -hmm. Let's we'll take that off then, shall we? So as you can hear, there's a steady trickle coming out of the engine. What we've done is break the bottom radiator hose off, and because that's bleeding through the thermostat's little uh, little vent line, it's just going to keep doing that until the engine displaces all its water. So, <clears throat> in the interest of getting things moving, I've just brought another bucket in, uh, and we'll just pop this off right now. That's a bit quick. Old and new are a match, which is good to note. Uh, the only thing I'll need to remember to put on is the rubber seal, which for some reason was buried in the bottom of the box. There we go, that is the chore part of this episode of Mechanical Day Complete. That has been on my mind, I'm not going to lie, for months, maybe even years. In fact, since we got that car, there has been no evidence of a belt change, and I'm like, nah, not really into it. So, that's a great weight off my mind. We've now got you running fleet without any service concerns. The next step for me, well, I don't know actually, that's kind of cleared the plate. A couple of things brewing in the background, which we'll probably get into, but not in this episode. However, let's finish it off with something slightly more interesting, shall we? Here comes a job. Yeah. Also known as working through a letterbox. Yes. How do you open this? Not like that, not, <laughs> evidently. Not like that. So, the first step <laughs> to working in this is to make the letterbox wider. I wish I was filming there, using your face. What we were saying before I promptly shat my knickers was we are putting on cane and goodness. But we've got a big pipe here and some form of intake a cold directory thing and the instructions that we don't have because who needs instructions? 27 yeah. mil, two Jubilee clips. 
Awesome. Uh, I'll film now just in case you snap anything else and then we'll uh, the right really need to every part of this manoeuvre. Tommy said post box when we started looking at this, I thought he was having a laugh. Look at the access. It's like, wow. I'm scared to touch anything, isn't it? How about the all, mate? Uh, that's it, that's good. Wow, so much more than fatalities. God, that's probably massive. While I'm sure this is going to sound nice, I'm not convinced it's going to necessarily help performance, as is the case with every induction kit ever. Because I'd imagine inside that post box gets somewhat toasty. Yeah, the the fact that there's a fan directly above the air intake designed to blow hot air out isn't encouraging. <laughs> That's the, uh, the flow meter in, thing in, everything tight. Okay, I'll listen. Yeah, we'll turn that on and uh, that'll be it. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. That's a good lesson in why you don't rush things at the end of the day, but fundamentally, we've got the filler on. I'm going to pin it there because something tells me, as far as mechanical deck goes, it's not the last time we're going to be seeing this on the channel. Anyway, that wraps up for now. Everyone run up beside the screen. Patreons, massive supports for Tools and Track. If you want to know what that's about, patreon.com slash tools and track. Jump on, be a supporter, we'd appreciate it. If not, cool, just do the like, subscribe thing because that also helps massively. And uh, until then, Drive safe, guys. We'll see you soon. Drive taking the entire front end off, but. Psst. Oot. Move.